Hi, and welcome to the Smartsheet demo. Smartsheet is one of the fastest growing project management softwares on the market today, and it's for good reason. We can manage our projects, our processes, our data, our communications, and our documents all in the same application. So in this Smartsheet demo, we'll go over how Smartsheet can be used for project management and also from a PMO perspective. So let's start our discussion at a high level so we can orient ourselves to where we are in the process. So if we look at Smartsheet from a project management perspective. These are all of the assets that we can include in our discussion to go from a project intake sheet where projects are requested all the way through our PMO project management dashboard where we get to look at all of our projects in a single view. So let's start back here in our project intake form. Today, you might be receiving project requests via email. And with anything received via email, there's usually a lot of back and forth because the, the data isn't standardized in a way that you can use it. So what we use is a project intake form shown here. This project intake form allows our users to submit project requests in a standardized format where we define what fields they can see. I'll show you what that looks like here. So this is our project intake form, and we have things like the project name, the project category, the project sponsor, it's very basic information about the project. Now we can expand this to our needs as much as we want, but right now I'm using a, a project template provided by Smartsheet to show you some of this basic functionality. So once a user submits this form, the form ends up in our project intake sheet. All that data exists in a row in our project intake sheet. And I'll show you what that looks like here. So we have things submitted in the form, like our project name, our project category, the project manager. It also assigns us with a project ID. So this is an automatic field that you can configure to assign your project IDs. Our target start date and target end dates, which were submitted by the end user submitting the form, the project sponsor, and then that sponsor's approval, as well as some additional information. Now, one of the things we should talk about in Sheets is workflows and automations. We can kick off automations, automated alerts, or approval requests, or update requests from our sheets that get sent to an end user's email. So in this case, Brent Williams is going to receive a request to either approve or deny this project request. Once approved, then we can send off another automated alert to let the project manager know that their project was approved. So that's just some examples of some automations and workflows that we can use in Smartsheet Sheets. So once that project is approved here on our intake sheet, we're gonna provision that project. And provisioning a project means that we can take a template set like this that has all of these Smartsheet assets. It has sheets, uh, dashboards, and reports. And we can create new projects with that same structure without having to create these individually. Now, depending on your level of Smartsheet, there is a premium application that's called Control Center that will spin this up for us. If your level of access to Smartsheet does not have Control Center, then we can do this manually with just a simple right click. Okay, so now let's look at a project from this project template perspective. So I'm gonna jump back into Smartsheet. We're gonna go back. So once our project has been approved, then we will create a project template folder just like this one. Now this project template folder has multiple assets in it. You can include additional assets as needed, uh, but let's look at each one individually. So we're gonna start here with the project plan. So if we go back to our overview, we're gonna start here with our project plan. Now, this is where we manage all of the tasks, all of the phases within our project. And we have some very fundamental information. So we have the schedule health, with red, yellow, blue, green indicators. We have the task names and the phase names, which also are set up in a hierarchy for us. So we can expand and collapse those hierarchies as needed. We have a status column to indicate the status of these tasks on in progress, on hold, not started, completed. And then we can customize these statuses uh, as we need to. We have an assigned to field here to indicate who this task is assigned to, which we can then automate send off automations for as well. So I can send June an automation that says when her task is going to start seven days prior, she'll get an automation reminding her that this task is going to start. 
We can send the same types of automations, alerts for any overdue tasks, um, and then various other scenarios as well. So we have our start date, our end date for these particular tasks, our percentage complete, our duration, and our predecessors. So you may see some of this functionality in some other project management softwares. It's standard project management functionality. So for our predecessors, for instance, this row says that when this when row number three ends, then this row can begin. The start date should start. So we can use predecessors to, to define our dates within our tasks based off of other tasks within our project. And then we have some other data over here to the right. Another thing that we can use is baselines in Smartsheet. So when I initially set up a project and I think it's going to run from January to August, that's my plan, I can set my baseline dates. So baselines will take a snapshot of all of my start and end dates for my project and store them in a totally different column. Then as I'm moving along throughout my project and my start and end dates are sliding one way or the other, Smartsheet automatically calculates for me the variance between what I said my project was going to go against, my initial timeline, and what my actual timeline is. So that way I can determine the health of my project. Am I behind schedule? Am I ahead of schedule? Am I right on schedule? All that is stored within Smartsheet. And then we can add additional items to our sheet here as well that we want to track along the way. We just add additional columns to our project plan. So that was our project plan here. So now let's go look at a report associated with this project. So we have a number of different reports here, three different reports here. The first one we're going to look at is the overdue report. So sheets are where we manage a lot of our data. Whereas reports will take that data and put it in a format and filter only the things that we want to see into a report view such as this. So we only have certain columns listed here. We don't have all of the columns in our sheet listed out. So we can determine which columns we want to present here. And then we can also see this information listed out on a Gantt chart in our report. The Gantt chart can also be shown on the Smartsheet sheet as well. Now, this report has two filters on it. It's our overdue report. So the first thing that it's going to filter out is any status, excuse me, any task with the status of not started, in progress, or on hold. And those tasks must also meet the criteria of having an end date in the past. So in other words, any task that should have started but hasn't will show up on our overdue report. So reports are great because you can customize reports for certain audiences or for certain people and show them the data that they need to see without them diving into the project plan, without getting them lost too far down into the weeds, into the details. So let me back out. I'm going to go to a different report. This one is my project milestones report. So in this case, we have those milestones indicated on our project plan, and those are the only things that we want to show up on this report. And then finally, we have our, our task rollup report here. So reports are not only used to gather data from Smartsheet sheets, but it can also be used to calculate information from those sheets as well. So in this case, we have a simple count. How many of our tasks are not starting, in progress, complete, etc. So we've talked about the sheet associated with our project plan. There's an additional sheet in here called our project metadata. A project metadata sheet is used to perform calculations on our project plan, and it's also used to store data about our project. So really high level information like my project plan name, my project number, my project start and end dates. This is all information that's very high level about a project. That way, if I have multiple sheets within my project, so for instance, if I have a raid log, if I have a weekly notes log, then I can use data from my metadata sheet and send that data to each one of those individual sheets in Smartsheet for that project. So now we're going to take a look at the project dashboard. So this is a dashboard at the project level. It's looking at one single project. We're going to look at a dashboard that shows multiple projects later on when we look at the PMO dashboard. But from this perspective, we have one single project displayed on our dashboard. And we can do things like add images to dashboards, use charts and graphs in our dashboards. We can display single information like this. We can display contact information over here. 
And we can also display links to other documents as well. So you can see here, this task, this task by status is a listing as a count of all of our tasks shown in this half donut graph. Now the graphs are somewhat interactive where we can uh, remove certain parts and pieces of our graph and only show certain sections that we want to see. And then we also have project information listed over here, which are just single values pulled out of our project plan. So what's the percentage complete of our project? What's the status of that project and the start and end dates of those projects? We have project contacts listed here. So who's our project manager, our portfolio manager, our VP of projects, and then links to resources. So these are clickable links that I can, uh, that I can send the user that's looking at this dashboard back to within Smartsheet or I can send them to links outside of Smartsheet. So maybe to my SharePoint site or maybe to my Google Drive for additional documents that are related to this project. So down at the bottom of our, of our dashboard here, we can see the two reports that we looked at earlier. Our overdue tasks report is listed here. And then our project milestones report that we created earlier is listed here. Now we have the project milestones report also showing the Gantt chart over to the right as well. So let's jump back to our overview. So we've taken in projects in our intake sheet. We've approved or denied those requests. And then now we've created our project sheet here at the top. So the next thing we're going to look at is our PMO perspective of all of our projects. Now I'm using a Smartsheet template to demonstrate this. And in this Smartsheet template, there's only one project. So we're going to see in our project, our, in our PMO dashboard, that one project listed. So you can see here at the portfolio level, the PMO has its own reports. So it's looking at all active projects. It's looking at all projects that are marked as risk, and it has its own portfolio metrics sheet. But let's look at the PMO dashboard. So this PMO dashboard, is displaying information at a different level. It's displaying it at the project roll-up level instead of individual projects. So this chart would be used to see all of our projects that are in a certain status in these different categories as we have them listed. It's used to show the number of projects by schedule health. So all of our projects would be listed here with their schedule health indicator as well. We can display text on our dashboards these are some more resource links that we talked about earlier. We can link to Smartsheet application assets, or we can link to external assets in our SharePoint or Google Sheets as well. And then we also have the ability just to show individual numbers, individual metrics on our dashboard. Down here at the bottom, we have our active projects report that was created for this PMO dashboard to display all of the active projects with only the columns that we wanna see out of those individual projects and then it lays those out on a Gantt chart as well. And then finally down here at the bottom, we have a placeholder for our form. If we want to add a form to our Smartsheet dashboard, we have the ability to do that here. So that was a very quick high level overview of projects in Smartsheet going all the way from our project intake through the project creation process, through the project management process, and then through the PMO's display of all of our projects within our organization. If you have any questions about this process, please drop them down in the comments below, or you could send me an email at ryan at workflowcreative.com, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have.